Hi everyone. So today's video is quite interesting and we're just going to be talking about how I knew he was the one, how he knew I was the one, what I like to say, the convictions I had, or basically the witnesses I had that he was my husband. And he will also share his as well. Yeah, so what I'm going to be sharing is basically how I came to the conclusion that I was going to marry you. Uh, not necessarily how I knew you were the one, because I don't necessarily subscribe to that um, ideology that there is a the one for every individual um, on earth. I mean, like there is someone predestined to be your spouse before you were born. Primary understand for me, I think that God, the Bible does say that he who finds a wife, mm -hmm. okay, finds a good thing. So God allows us that liberty to look for who mm. we are to get married to mm. okay now i think that if god wouldn't impose what i consider the most important decision in life which is that of salvation if god wouldn't impose that on people why would then god impose marriages on people by pre-deciding and predetermining who someone would marry um so that's that's just it for me i believe that we can search prayerfully search for someone to marry and yeah, make that decision exactly because i mean what if let's say there is there was just one particular person for you and maybe mm. you see the person and you don't like the person that means you probably get into a marriage where you don't like the person and you're just married this person it's because god says you <laughs> <laughs> it's because god says you that's yeah. why i'm marrying you yeah. you know and all of that anyhow all this is just for us to say that i we don't think that there's just one particular person for you but then there is a particular kind of person that can suit you, suit mm -hmm. your destiny, yeah. your purpose, your assignment, your personality, mm -hmm. your vision, your dreams. Even though the person is a Christian, it's not every Christian that can even suit you as a Christian. Yeah. I also want to put out this disclaimer that this is just, you know, how God witnessed to me, the different ways God witnessed to me. It's not like he's a guide for everybody. Okay. So for me, I would say that the first witness for me knowing he was the one was actually his character and values because i think before then i think i even had written the kind of things i wanted okay. in a man what did okay you write? Beep. <laughs> calm down <laughs> so uh things like that of course using the scripture so the word of god and then his character and his values because the truth is it's not just about being a christian or a believer even Jesus said, by their fruits, you shall know them. So I wanted those fruits and then you had them. So seeing all those things in you, I'm like, wow, this person, you know, I think is someone that I can marry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's now God. What do you think about this person? So I started to pray about it because this marriage thing, honestly, means a lot to me. I didn't just want to get into marriage with anybody. I mean, I had a vision for the kind of marriage I wanted and I wanted someone that could fit into that vision okay so for me marriage is just beyond the person getting married to just anybody there was a bigger picture like a godly home raising godly seed. so it's not everybody you can do that with i started praying about it you guys something happened okay there was this lady where we were in the same university together so we were once in the same fellowship we had not spoken i, I graduated from university i did my induction at 2018 so it was 2019 I started my house job. For those that have seen our How We Met video, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you've not seen that video, please go and see it. So, so that 2019 was when I was doing my house job and he had already asked me out. And this lady, I've never, I don't think we used to have a conversation. I don't think I've chatted her up, you know, since I graduated. Even before graduating, we were not close because she wasn't even my classmate, right? So one day, as I was just praying to God, you know, about this person, she sent me a WhatsApp test and then she was like, I had a dream about you. Initially, I didn't even consider anything, but for some reason, you know, it kept flashing and I just had this urge and this notch to share this dream with you. You know, I didn't consider it anything, but it kept on coming. I was like, oh, let's go, you know. And then she was like, she had a dream and she saw me when I was getting married. And the person she saw me with was an evil man and not just that he was an evil man she saw that i was very happy in that dream she saw that the way my husband was just loving me there was so much joy and so much love i was happy in that marriage you know that when she said that it's not just about the dream sometimes when you know some words come the holy spirit within you plays a part in bearing witnesses to 
you know, whatever God is, you know, however God is speaking through or however God is speaking to you. Do you understand? Because God speaks to us through different ways. We need to be sensitive and thank God for the Holy Spirit that bears witness. I mean, somebody could have told me a dream and the spirit within me would be like, discard this. But when she said that, you know how Mary or Elizabeth saw uh, Mary and the baby within her leaped for joy? That was the same way. Immediately she shared this dream, you guys. It was like the Holy Spirit just bore me witness that, ah, this thing she's saying is God. And guys, when I left school, I was not dating anybody. So it's not like she knew that there's someone around the corner. I'd never spoken to her. I don't post his pictures. There was nothing. And I had not had any, I had not had any conversation with anybody about this except my God in heaven. So there was no how she could have known, even down to the tribe. I even, she even said his complexion. I think she said fair evil guy, something like that. And somehow that really left an impression. But I didn't tell her anything. I just said, oh, thank you. She was like, I don't know if the dream means anything, but I'm just going to share it anyways. I was like, thank you. But it meant something. But I wanted more Convention. conventions. Okay. Yes, the dreams, fine and good. But I was just a believer of direct like a word from god and i also wanted personal revelation okay of course god can speak to you through people but i also wanted him to speak to me so that was really good you know that gave me a confirmation that made me feel like god sees me you know how god can just reveal something to somebody else about you you're praying about something in your space and god is like god is very intentional about us that was that you guys let me give a backstory before i share the next thing that happened when i was much younger in school when i was in i think no i was in i think just about entering secondary school there was this our sunday school teacher then in our local church right when i was a child so she was going to get married i remember then i remember then she didn't want to marry that person because he was a pastor of our church then she didn't want to marry him number one because <laughs> she felt he didn't have money <laughs> let me not even go into that I know that she did not want to marry him because I was, I know that she, she, she used to talk to my mom because my mom was like a big auntie to her. I remember then she, my mom was advising her that it's not about the money and all that. So I think, but anyhow, but I remember one thing. She said that her mom had a dream that this person was going to be her husband. Okay. And again, somebody else, I'll call him her spiritual father, also had a dream or had a revelation that this particular pastor in that church is her husband. And then I know she cried. She didn't want to marry him long and short, but at the end of the day, she did marry him. But that time I was a child. I mean, I didn't really know much about hearing God and all of that. So I remember when I just overheard that conversation, I went to pray to God as a child that, God, when it's time for me to get married, reveal the person I'll get married to to my mom. I just made a casual prayer because of that thing she said. I've never learned about hearing God and knowing things. I just knew, I think from childhood, I've just always known that. I wanted to get it right in marriage. I don't know, but I just knew that. I just went and made a prayer. You know, and I didn't know I had forgotten about it. It was when I was preparing to do this video that the Holy Spirit reminded me, can you remember that prayer you prayed as a child? I had forgotten that I made that prayer. So you guys, fast forward to 2019 again, or this time, I think it was almost 2020 at that time, when this young man was around the corner and this young lady was praying. <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> <laughs> okay my mom comes and tells me the first time she was like she got an indirect revelation for me she was like there are three men around you god said that the person that is your husband is the one that doesn't really have money what do you mean <laughs> are you sure I'm, I'm the one that god showed me because i have money i had money i've always had money nothing <laughs> They did not say, wait, okay, let me, the way she said that is the person that is not so rich uh, out of the three. Because then, babe, three or two of them had cars. Which car did you have? I had it in me. Ah, car rest son tolaba. <laughs> <laughs> we were basically almost earning the same thing as house officers. And mm -hmm. this one of them was even driving the latest Benz, babe. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's not like that. Why are the you saying sorry? You don't the way you said sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's why. Right. Okay. So is that it? No, I'm it's not trying. It's a big deal. I'm not trying me. to. It, it, it did not intimidate me. Then. I know. I know. It cannot intimidate me now. Yeah, I know. One thing, my husband is never intimidated. I love his confidence. So, she just said it that the one that is your husband is the one that is, does not really. Let me not say that, that does not have money. Is not really rich. So. She said that, and honestly, I had that witness within me. She's talking about God's sin. That's my husband. I said, this is the person. 
I still, you know, I was grateful to God. I was like, wow. But I still, I was still praying. You know, I was still praying. I was like, I wanted a direct revelation. I wanted a personal revelation and all of that. You guys, occasion number two, my mom comes again. This time, okay, let me tell you the revelation she had. I remember the spot where she told me that because I was just coming out of my room and she was just coming upstairs to come and meet me, you know, and it was on a Wednesday because she had gone for a Wednesday fasting and prayer, you know, that they do in church, you know, church activities. So she was coming to come and meet me. She said that, oh, that this is, you know, what she has for me. She said, there are three, there are three men, you know, around you. This was the second occasion. The one that is your husband is a doctor. Is the one that's a doctor. Now, you guys... <laughs> Why are you not? <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, you guys, babe, do you know why this was so profound? Wow. Because this was at that point where, I don't know, at some point in our journey, I wanted to marry a pastor. There was a reason why I thought I was going to marry a pastor. So at some point in my, in my, in my, in our journey, I was getting a bit confused. And my husband, I know I had this sort of conversation with him while we were, you know, talking. My husband told me, I'm not going to be a pastor. <laughs> And he did not know what I was asking. Like, and, and of course, that's one thing the Holy Spirit taught me. You cannot make him to be what I've not called him to be for yourself. Now, what I said was that I, at that time, I could not see myself being a pastor. Yeah. I never know. Maybe in the future, I'll become a pastor. But Maybe I'm the not, way you said I'm it. I'm not looking forward to it, even now. <laughs> okay? So. <laughs> the way you said I just shifted it into the conversation, you know. What if you're know, like, ah, God has not called him to be a pastor? So, because I thought that I wanted to marry a pastor for some reason, especially one I you thought. You wanted to be Mommy Jew. Babe, stop! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stop making it look like. It's probably but, one of them. Moving Isn't... on, moving on. <laughs> you guys, this is so funny because at that time, the person that was a pastor at some point told me that he had convictions that I was his wife. Mm. So, it became more confusing for me. It's a, it's a long story. But so when she came and told me that, is as if God is so intentional to the detail. Of course, it was the only doctor then out of those three. But it was so profound for me to know that, wow, like God, you really see me. How? To the detail. And my mom did not know whether I was going through anything, whether I was praying about I was. She did not know that there was even somebody like there's like a pastor around the corner. Okay. She just came and and I was like, oh wow, you guys, that is witness number what? Three. <laughs> so I, I know I was still praying about it. Something else happened. So another thing that happened is even the person that, you know, I was that was convinced that you know that you know if that was his wife. He once told me that he had a dream, but he, he couldn't place it and he shared it with me. And of course, I had this witness in me. The Holy Spirit just gave me an interpretation of the meaning of the dream. He was even telling me, Oh, I had this dream. I don't know the meaning. I, I understood the meaning. He, he was like, Do you know what it means? I was like, Don't worry, it's personal, you won't get it. So, but I know that God also used him to witness to me about my husband. But he, I'm sure he didn't know on two occasions. He had two different type of dream, two different dreams, but he didn't understand. And I had that witness that, okay, this is what it meant. I still felt like I needed to hear myself. So I remember one day in my room, I, I, I remember where I was sitting. I can still remember that position where I was sitting. I, it was so vivid. I had really prayed. And it's like, Lewis, we just told me to sit down. We're just talking. And he started to unveil to me, ask me questions. And at that point, I was sincere about my motives. It was more like a conversation. You know, especially at that motive of wanting to marry a pastor, asking me different questions. And I remember then I was, it was for the first time, I started to see things in a different light. You know, I was very sincere and I was very honest. And during the course of that conversation, I remember that he gave me a scripture. This is a scripture for your marriage. That was what he told me. Okay. And... That scripture was so important. I felt like that's like the, the very basis of this our marriage. That's like the foundation. In fact, every time we pray together, we always quote that scripture because, you know, it's like this is, you know, God giving you this scripture. This is the scripture for your marriage. And he also began to open my mind concerning the other person. I felt like this is, you know, I want to marry a pastor and all of that. He started to show me some things. Part of it, to be honest, was character. You know, part of it. It's not like this person has a bad character. This person has a very good character. But I'm talking about character in line with mine. Sometimes your motive can, you know, make you blind to certain things that you're supposed to see. 
okay so god started to show me some things i started to ask him some questions i started to unveil my motives to me and of course during that period after he gave me a scripture to be honest i also had a dream yes and it was quite vivid this time and um and, and i was very certain i just want to check this in before my husband shares his story sometimes you need to be very wary of your motives when you're praying for the one that you know your heart needs to be open you need to be very sincere with god god can speak to you in different ways the most important thing is being sensitive to what he's saying and that in word witness bearing witness to whatever he's speaking to you god will speak to you at his own time i don't think because you're trying to you know trying to ask god for who to marry you want him to answer you now today 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 i'm not saying that it, it will take long and i'm not saying that it will be too short but i'm just saying patient is needed so that you don't rush things and make mistakes so let me allow my husband to share his <laughs> my own is not that spiritual i'm feeling very intimidating right uh, now be. but it uh, shows you that you now you people like those people that to hear god in a higher frequency which one is higher frequency? higher frequency you don't need all this you just want and you get it <laughs> i'm like I, i've already gotten that out, out of the way um is that i now do not believe that there is a the one um but there was a time i used to have that belief and I, I think it's probably good if i just mention um that experience uh, i began to pray about um whoever i would marry from quite very early i think that was from about first year in the university because my mom would always encourage me pray about your marriage pray about your wife pray about who you are going to marry the funny thing is that she actually didn't want me to marry early wow she, she was still telling me to pray about it so because i started early to pray um somewhere along the line i began to um began to be very attentive to to see what it is that God will show me about who this person is. Um, and I did at some point begin to get certain things I believe that was God speaking to me or showing me signs that meant that this person was the person I, I was supposed to marry. Every form of um, signal that, that, that I could imagine, apart from audible voice, if it came to dream like you had, if it came to maybe scriptures and things like that, you know, I had all of that experience. Yeah. So I was convinced at some point that this person was supposed to be the person I'd marry and but when I spoke to this person she and I, I had already thought that there's no two ways about it she was going to say yes because apart from things I'd seen um, we were quite very close and I knew that we had gotten close to the point where I thought once I said it she was going to say yes but when I said it she disagreed with it she basically said no and <laughs> and I, I would have pushed further if not that the response she gave was such that for me it was a deal breaker uh, she told me that she was struggling with god when she was praying about it. it was like she she wanted it but god was resisting her saying you should not even think about it after she said that um, i was a bit distraught because i felt I'd already committed right, my emotions into this. So, but um, when I came back after we spoke, uh, I just went to my Bible, opened it, because I was looking for consolation, basically. Yeah. So I opened the scripture to read. What I saw uh, was a, a, a place in Psalm, Psalms, you know, the last, very last verse of it said, wait, I say unto you, mm. wait. Okay. So at that point, I, I was a bit consoled, you know, I, I, decided to get off my mind anything concerning um thinking about who to marry and things for a while yeah. one of the things that came to my mind and reassured me at some point was i think around the period when that thing was happening somebody came to um church you know and he he said something he said uh, he, he, he spoke about one of the one of our fathers of faith in, in the church i mean one of the great men of god um I don't know if it was Bishop or Yedep, where he mentioned that God told who the wife was supposed to be. God told him who his wife was supposed to be. But when he approached the lady, the lady said no. There was nothing he could do. And then he still finally um, got married to the person who he's married to today and they are prospering and succeeding. Yeah, okay, so, so I think, sorry, this also boils down to what we were saying before, mm -hmm. like there is no 
one person for him. Exactly. Because what if that woman was his own one person? And she exactly. said, no, ah, no marriage for me. <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah, that's the thing. I mean, um, so, so when God... God can say something, the person didn't understand it. Now, there was a time when this other person I spoke to now was like, I think it might have been fear okay, mm. that made me say that. But then at that point, we'd already moved on. Um, but I said to her, you are a child of God. I am a child of God. Yeah. And you said what you said, okay, believing that you were obeying God, mm. even if it were that you made a mistake, even if it were that you probably didn't understand what you heard or the signals you were getting. God is a loving father and he's mm. merciful. He will still make you get married right. He wouldn't let you marry wrongly, mm. okay? Because you are trying to obey him. It's, it would have been different if you something else determined your decision to say no. Maybe you were considering that I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of money then or whatever else it was. So God was not going to let you get um, married wrongly. Today I, I'm happily married. Yeah. She's happily, happily married, married to a very wonderful God. man. So I was praying about to marry and at the same time looking out for the things i wanted in a wife looking out for a wife so when the time came where i started considering yourself um, I, at, at that time i knew that i was very open to god as well i said to god that i don't know how i'm going to say okay i want to ask for confirmation about this because um i had seen dreams mm. and you know what happened happened so if i were to depend on dreams i don't think i would trust it 100 percent. okay so but what i did was to pray as i was praying about who to marry i was also looking out for um who has that quality qualities i was looking out for when i saw you you were a wife before i met you the bible says he who finds a wife okay you were a wife i just made you mine that that's that's just it okay what do i mean by you were a wife oh you, your mindset was already geared towards being a good wife okay you spoke about family of the values you had about family um the values you had about raising godly kids and there are other things i, I also considered you know chief amongst them being um, somebody who loves God because I know that sincerely if I'm marrying someone who loves God um, and someone who is yielded okay to the Holy Spirit God God can reprimand you or tell you um, this is not right and that is right right and then you can obey the Holy Spirit and do that I saw these things and then I began to pray about it so I continued to pray about it continued to also observe things on my own until I felt that peace within myself and then I went ahead to talk to you. Now, that is basically how it was until I spoke to you. But even after I'd spoken to you, I was still praying. And then I remember that while we were still courting, okay, there was something I just asked God to, to show me. And, and it's not like to show me, but I just asked God okay. yeah, to do this thing. It had always been in our prayer point. And I remember before you said yes to me, you told me about that thing. Okay, and um, even though I didn't mind about it, but I was saying, God, I wanted this to happen before our marriage. Okay, so whilst we are courting, there was a day, like two or three days before I was praying and I said that to God. Then I remember I had gone to bank and then you called me that afternoon and said to me, God has done this. The kind of joy that filled my heart. It's not just because of that thing that God did. I just felt like God actually mm -hmm. listened or had my prayer. I, I had that feeling that, okay, it happened at this time because God wanted me to also be doubly sure about what I'd asked him about. I think there was something else I, I probably should have mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, that when um, we were getting close, we had not started um, courting then and I had not asked you out then. Um, there was something I did observe as well. I felt that whenever we worked together, okay, mm. we got things done better, I mean, easier. Things, things we had this um, synergistic um, influence on things that, that, that was good. Two churches exactly yeah that's that's the kind of experience i had then and whenever we prayed together about we yeah. could see that god was answering those prayers whenever yeah. we prayed together and apart from that when you speak to me or um, advise me about doing something i think there was a time i was thinking about doing a business you know whilst we are doing house job and you spoke to me about okay i could do something about um about was it selling 
hand gloves or something like that, so, which I did start, and the thing really prospered. I mean, I got some. I mean, I, got, now, I carry all. favor for it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, so um, I felt for me as well, that was, that was a positive sign. It was something that spoke to me as that, okay, I mean, you both can, can, um, ch of course, like you said, chase 10,000 together. Mm. So yeah, that was important. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So if you are at that place where you're trusting God for making a decision, in making a decision rather towards marriage, I just pray that, you know, God will open the eyes of your understanding that you would understand. So that is for this video. And I don't know if you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, just give it a thumbs up. We're going to talk about some of the things that we did during courtship because aside, it's now that you know the person to marry, there is a way to date. Yeah. There is a way to maximize your courtship for a great marriage because you can actually hear all that you can hear. You get into the marriage and things are looking like, is yeah. that really here? Mm -hmm. Start to question. He just like when John the Baptist was in prison, he was like, go and ask him if he's really the Messiah because yeah. he already saw a situation of things. So we're going to talk about how we're able to maximize our courtship season to just make it a great one for a great marriage. Thank you so much. If you see, if you have stayed till this place, please don't forget to like and share. Somebody might benefit from it and also turn on the notification button and also help me appreciate my husband for joining us here again. Ha, 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 ha.